Hi guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another episode of Total War Arena. So we're going to um, pop back and have a look at the Carthaginian sword line. So following patch 3.1, which was released um, you know, the other day, not long ago, um, the Carthage sword line received a bit of a buff because it was sort of underperforming. And, well, it certainly was underperforming. The Carthage sword line, sort of pre-patch 3.1, pretty mediocre it didn't really fulfill any roles it wasn't that quick um but yet it lost to everything once it, once it engaged them in combat um so it was generally pretty useless so what's changed well basically they have given them a small buff across all the units obviously i'm just looking at the tier 5 punic mercenaries here because i haven't gone any further down the line than that um but basically all of the carthage sword infantry have received a plus five percent melee attack bonus which i think is a good thing um I sort of you're hearing bang on that I think melee attack is probably the most important uh, attribute for sword infantry uh, I think at the moment and yes that's been a 5% bonus across the board that's the most useful thing that's changed and that has made a slight difference I think um, there's also been a weapon penetration a 2% increase not going to make a great deal of difference I don't think but better than nothing and a slight speed boost um, two percent uh, across the board which isn't a great deal because they're pretty horrendously slow units to start with so two percent on a pretty slow unit isn't a great deal um obviously force march with hannibal makes them a bit more usable but yeah they're still pretty slow on their base speed when they're not in force march mode um and other than that they also got one of these new uh strike abilities that have been added to all these units and uh slash is what it is which is basically you just do uh, it's just like a hard um, a hard strike, a hard slash, and it does damage to everyone and causes knockback. Which is it's kind of useful, you know, it gives you a little bit extra damage. It's kind of like mount kick, but for sword infantry, basically. Um, everything else has really much stayed the same. So, yeah, so I think it's 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 an improvement that I still don't think they're anything particularly amazing. But they do seem to hold their own in combat a little bit more. Um, I've only had a couple of games with them since patch 3.1 because I'm not really intending to go down this line at the moment. Um, but I had a bit of fun in one or two of the games, so I'll just pop into one of the replays now and we can have a look how we got on. So, you join me on the Battle of Thermopylae. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, yeah, it's the, the, the main improvement I think we've had to these guys is this 5% uh, melee attack. I think that's the most important thing and that's what's made the difference uh, the most. So it puts their melee attack here at 111, although I am using them with a the consumable as well, so that's giving it a bit of a boost. Um, and that's all, sort of a lot more workable uh, with that. Before it was sort of, you know... Um, high 90s and it made it very hard to deal any damage to the Romans um, particularly when you encounter Romans with vengeance you got slaughtered and that really is still the case you can't go toe to toe um, with Roman infantry you know activating vengeance um, to, to counter with your ad portus now once you've got force march activated you should be quicker than most Roman uh, infantry so if you can bait out the enemy vengeance sort of get away then re-engage and activate your ad portus then you do stand a chance and particularly if you can get determination activated at the same time because that gives you a uh, boost to your melee attack as well so you can really start to do a bit of damage to them. Um, anyway, in this battle, it's not exactly a, a prime example because we um, we get quite well on the, uh, the matchmaking so we're largely fighting tier 4s which obviously isn't probably the best test for these guys but uh, previously, I mean, they even used to struggle against things like that so yeah, they, they, they really weren't very good units I don't think before the patch. Um, anyway, despite being shot at by artillery, um, which I think is a lot better in patch 3.1, um, at least from a non-artillery player's point of view, probably. <laughs> if you're an artillery fan, you don't like the uh, changes. But for me, I feel like um, the sort of level of damage I receive, what, sort of 11% uh, on that one, 5% on that unit, is a lot more manageable. I I'm not being completely eradicated from the map by a couple of volleys from the enemy artillery. So yeah, it's nice. Um, so I'm just sort of loitering around at the start. I didn't quite know what, to, what I wanted to do. I didn't really want to go over here into the forest. These guys are sluggish enough as it is. And that's one thing to say. They still feel really slow or unresponsive is probably the best word. Um, probably exasperated because I've been playing the Barbarian Infantry a lot quickly recently, which are not only fast, but sort of turn quickly and accelerate quickly. These guys do feel slow. But anyway, I get my first engagement against these enemy Hastati. Um, I'm careful to make sure I disengage uh, Force March before I enter combat because you Force March gives you a charge deflect a negative modifier, so it means you're a lot more vulnerable. Um, I move up with the intention of flanking this Astarte, but the, the, the guy moves in his other two units, um, which obviously um, means I had to focus on these instead. 
So basically, I activated Ad Portus and Determination on all of these fights because I thought it was the best thing to do. Um, over here, you see we are winning quite conclusively on most of these fights, even with the forest negative modifiers. Um, we're taking a fair amount of friendly fire from the enemy from allied archers. These guys uh, keep trying to push into us, but our slashes actually does quite a lot of damage, which is what I'm quite impressed with. And of course, we do have access to add portus, which gives us the increase to melee weapon damage. Um, yeah, so basically we cut these down guys down pretty convincingly. Um, it makes a bit of an error trying to run. I think he tries to run through us here before realising, so he actually takes a lot of damage there. And it means he also really pushes on to my slash, so that when I activate it, I do an awful lot of damage because we get a lot of hits. Now, something else that's worth considering um, from a practice point of view is whether pushing into enemy units before activating slash is of benefit. Now, the other thing, I, I got a bit lucky here in the sense that this guy pushed his units in on me uh, before my ad portus deactivated so it meant i'm now at 200 percent weapon damage and look we can rack up a lot of damage very quickly uh, against these guys you can see by like, each hit we're doing 450 500 damage per hit it's an awful lot and then i'm able to finish off this other unit in the forest and bring these guys back around to flank uh, on the back of these libyan recruits which enables us to do quite a lot of damage on them so yeah, I find these units to be a lot more usable. I think uh, there would have been a time when these would have struggled really to fight this many uh, enemies. Oh god, that was a lot of friendly fire. Um, I kind of wish this archer would shoot somewhere else. Um, but yeah, you can see how effective it is with um, discipline lost, you know, the amount of damage we rack up. 8,000 for 33 against these living recruits. Um, they just don't really stand much of a chance. The amount of damage when you start doing 450 per hit is pretty brutal. Um, and that's kind of where oops, it looks like I forgot to engage actually push these guys into the fight properly um, so yes yeah, so that's where um, ad portus actually comes in as a pretty useful ability is when you're sort of um, fighting against something that's not got an ability activated if you can fight against Romans which haven't got uh, vengeance activated then that becomes pretty useful but yeah as I was saying um, slash I'm kind of wanted to do some experiments um, to see if um, I don't know what I'm doing here I decided to ignore these these uh, Libyan recruits by the look of it not quite sure why I did that. <laughs> I didn't realise I did that. Um, yeah, so my plan was to, uh, yeah, to try and experiment. See if when pushing into enemy units, if you then activate slash, you get uh, more an increased amount of damage. Kind of like where um, it, with shield bash on the Greek hoplites, if you kind of push into the enemy units before you activate shield bash, you do a lot more damage than when you activate it because every you're touching all these enemy units, which you then shield bash. Um, so I'm kind of curious to do, if you do the same thing and then activate Slash, if that has a similar effect. Because it's a similar type move to Shield Bash, really, uh, I think. I'm also curious as to the effect this um, ability might have on things like War Dogs. Because it's got, like, knockback. So War Dogs are greatly affected by things like Shield Bash. Because if you go into Shield Bash, they activate Shield Bash. And it does that sort of wide-ranging amount of damage um, to enemy units, which is really effective. Um, against war dogs because war dogs don't really have a lot of defense ability they're just all about attack so it does a lot of damage to them um, so i was cu curious to see if slash affects war dogs and if it does is it going to be pretty devastating changes for the war dogs because it means they're going to have a lot more possible enemies um for some reason it seems like i didn't actually notice this unit at all i don't know how i completely ignored it. it looks like i've got myself into a bit of an excessively um big fight here i'm not quite sure what was going on there it looks like I completely managed to completely ignore the enemy uh, enemy units there. Oh, it looks like some of us are routing. Oh dear. Well, it wasn't particularly well played on my part, was it? But it wasn't really supposed to be a, a quality gameplay video. It was more a, a sort of example of uh, how the units have changed. And I think they have changed for the better, but it's not really um, still a tech tree that I, I'm desperate to go down or think has been uh, miraculously improved anything, uh, anything much, to be honest. So it looks like things are going bad to worse, and it looks like we're going to be routing. Oh dear. Yeah, and there we go. Unfortunately, that is the end of my game. Oh, it wasn't too bad. We managed to crew up 2,500 uh, aggression points. We managed to kill quite a lot of people down here. Look at the amount of uh, people we've managed to lay waste to. I didn't know why I completely ignored the remaining of those uh, Libyan recruits. I can't have been paying very much attention, can I? Uh, this is not a particularly great game. Uh, but we're a bit short on time, so I don't have time to do lots more games uh, to get some good footage. So, yes, so interesting changes, but 
nothing amazing, I don't think. Um, but just a general improvement. So it's certainly a step in the right direction, but still not as competitive as the Romans is, is sort of my general opinion on them. And I've got a nice rear charge on some Macedonian hoplites. Looks like a proper stalemate seems to have gone on here. That's one of the other changes they have introduced. Um, you no longer take damage from friendly deployables. So the hoplite unit here could run back through these stakes and wouldn't receive any damage. He, or, you know, even if it's not his stakes, which obviously they're not, they're obviously deployed by these Romans here. So yes, that's a nice little change I think they've implemented. Um, it's sometimes easy to run on your own stakes by mistake, and sometimes some people do it, I think, on purpose. Um, just to, to try and troll if they kill themselves, or they sometimes enjoy controlling disconnected units to run into uh, allied stakes. So, yes, I think that's a good thing that that's changed all in all. It looks like this guy is doing exactly what I did and is just ignoring these enemy units. <laughs> Not quite sure what's going on there. But he is like, pushing into these enemy hoplites. He's, and he's killing them pretty convincingly. That's another thing that's changed. Um, spears no longer do friendly fire damage. Which is an interesting change. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, really. I'm a little bit reserved about that. But looks like oh, looks like this uh, hoplite player has quit the game. <laughs> Didn't fancy staying around for the, uh, for the last bit of slaughter. Um, but yes... Uh, I don't know if there's a lot else going on in this battle. Should we keep this one going to the end? That's pretty much going to be it for the review of the Carthage Sword Infantry, because obviously I'm dead. Um, but... Oh, no, notice that that's still ticking down. Interesting. Um, that elephant seems to have completely broken. Oops. Uh, but yes, I think we'll probably end this battle here. It's going to go on for quite a while yet before the end, and there's not a lot else interesting that happens. So, let's hop out of this battle. It was a victory, we did end up winning, but uh, sometimes it's not particularly very interesting watching some of the slow battles right to the very end, and I can't, I've got nothing else left to talk about, so <laughs> um, this video has turned into a much, far much more of a ramble than I had perhaps intended. So yes, to sum up, good changes, but not amazing, um, is my general opinion. But I, eventually I will be pressing on. I think I forgot what the next one is. Iberian Rebels. I think these guys get slower and slower though as we get further down the line. 3.8. Um, let's have a look at the tier 7s for movement speed. 3.3. Yeah, they're just pretty slow, these guys. And while um, a Force March obviously is nice because it gives you that 19% movement speed bonus, you know, it's, it's a requirement because 3.3 is just shockingly slow. I don't know if there's much that gives movement speed plus 8. It's not so bad. Um, plus four on the body armor. You can get a bit more speed out of them. Yeah, I don't know. Not a massive fan of the Carthaginian line so far. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry that this has turned into a very rambling video. I, I don't obviously didn't plan this one out quite properly. But we'll probably release it all the same because I can't bother to reshoot it. So <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Give the video a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more rambling Total War Arena content. And I shall see you all on the next video.